Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I'd like to thank you for joining me once again for another installment of my Pokemon Soul Silver Nuzlocke run. You can catch the show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when you're done with that, you can catch up on all my previous broadcasts on YouTube where they publish as VODs every Wednesday and Saturday. Without further ado, uh, tonight, we are about to embark on potentially what might be the last uh, installment of my Nuzlocke run. Maybe not, but we are certainly barreling towards the end. We beat the 8th gym leader, but we got to go do some bullshit before we can actually earn our 8th gym badge. Um, I'd say, like, here's the thing. I feel like I could rush to the Elite Four and take them on real quick this stream. However, we have a bit of a problem right now which is that we are down a major player on our team. We now have Special K, Applejacks, Vector, and Frosted Flex, and I feel like we need at least one more powerful Pokemon on our team if we're gonna make this run work. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm pretty certain, I'm pretty certain that we can get our hands on a Dratini in the cave that we're about to go into, but I don't remember if... I want to say that, like, the Dratini is gifted to you. What I don't remember is if you can also encounter Dratinis in the wild in that cave, and or if you can also encounter other Pokemon that would invalidate that one Dratini that you're, you know, hopefully gunning to get at the very end of the cave. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of repels from the Pokemon Center uh, next door, the Pokemon Store, actually, and I'm going to use those to repel the hell out of the uh, cave that we're going to be going into in the hope that we won't be able to encounter any wild Pokemon along the way that will invalidate us potentially acquiring that one Dratini. If we can get our hands on that Dratini, I think that will be fantastic. I think his addition to our team will be like incredibly helpful. It's not great that we're getting another Pokemon on our team that is weak to both uh, Rock-type moves and Ice-type moves, but you know, the sheer power that Dragonite boasts, obviously, is nothing to be trifled with. Uh, hello to Tuples. I hope you're having a good evening. Uh, let me grab some repels real quick. And I should probably speak to that one dude over there as well. I should also probably get some... Oh, I didn't realize we already had 10. All right, well, I'll buy 11 in that case. I'm going to buy some potions as well. Uh, this is another one of those streams where I got dinner uh, going in the corner over here. Tonight's main course, a uh, whole lot of shepherd's pie. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's not um, a fresh shepherd's pie that I made from scratch, but it's uh, it's very decent. It's very decent. I also got some leftover fish as well, and some leftover hash browns. It's a very potato-centric meal. I'm gonna put Gyarados to the front of my party for now, because he's the one member that probably needs to level up the most. Um... But, I mean, I'll switch them out as need be. I, I mean, I've been doing pretty good tuples. Um, my birthday is coming up uh, this upcoming Wednesday. And that's pretty exciting. It's gonna, you know, not be a particularly, like, high-stakes affair. I'm not having, like, a big birthday bash. But it will be the first birthday that I've had since the start of the pandemic that I'll be able to do at, like, a proper... Um, like, restaurant. Thank you! All the other pandemic birthdays I've had, uh, we had to kind of order takeout. Even though I would have still risked it and gone to a restaurant. Um, and, yeah, okay, I'm gonna definitely have to switch this guy out. Um, and it, it sucked, because in every single instance, I always was like, alright, well, if I'm gonna order from home, I'm gonna make sure that I can, you know, select a really good restaurant to order out from, from home. And inevitably like that restaurant would like 
for whatever reason not be available to take orders on my birthday or it would have closed and i i always my birthday dinners were always like well we have to set, settle for like the second or third or fourth best option and it was really just shitty I, i'm not trying to make it sound like i you know exclusively suffered um during the pandemic when it came to my birthdays everybody suffered but it was just uh it was just year after year just so frustrating The fact that my parents are admittedly a little bit uh, chintzy when it comes to money, I mean, obviously doesn't help matters. But if they find an opportunity to not spend money, they'll take it. That much is for certain. I am turning 28. But like everything else on this run, this is, you know, my first time experiencing this cave, so if I get a little bit lost, you'll have to forgive me for not knowing exactly where it is I'm supposed to go. If I can take out all three of these horses without having to, like, switch out or anything, that would be great, but yeah, I think things are going to get complicated in a minute. Uh, come on. There we go. Okay, I think this is where we're going to have to switch out, because I don't think that... I don't think we can take on this Seedra the way we could take on the horses. Oh, what? Oh, wait. Oh, no, I made... Damn it. I thought... I thought I was switching into Applejack, so I was like, why is that doing so much damage? Well, now, uh, I guess Weeping Bell is going to get a little bit of extra experience points from that. It's a little bit too bad, because I was hoping to level up Gyarados again, but I guess we'll have to wait a little bit. Now, I'm a little bit confused. This cave is supposed to, like, exclusively contain trainers that are, like, part of this, like, dragon training clan, but then there are just, like, a bunch of girls in here that don't have anything to do with anything? I'm a little bit confused. Um... What am I looking for here? Right, I want to heal up Gyarados a little bit. <sighs> and I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put um, Apple Jacks alongside him. Maybe they'll explain. Maybe they, I, I suspect they probably just wandered into the cave. They don't seem like they're part of the Dragon Clan stuff. Oh, but they do have Dratinis. Maybe they're like the kids of the Dragon Clan, and nepotism has allowed them to kind of hang out around here. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Come on. There we go. There we go. Thank God a lot of these Pokémon don't have, you know, very high hit points. Oh, shit. I am very happy that he did not use that on Gyarados. I actually, I should probably be... In the future, I should probably be more careful when fighting... Uh, Dratinis and Dragonairs as Gyarados, because they can definitely use, as we have seen here, uh, a lot of Electric-type moves that can really ruin my day. Fine, it's fine if Gyarados fights Horsey, Seedra, and Kingdra, because those guys don't know any... 
uh, electric type moves or rock type moves for that matter, but uh, other dragons are a no go. Oh, do we have to use Whirlpool? Oh. Or maybe not. Hold on. I think Whirlpool might just be. Oh, no, we do have to use Whirlpool because clearly. Give me a second. Yeah, I think we need to use Whirlpool if we want to access the front entrance of this shrine. I could, you know what, just to speed things up, I'm going to go ahead. Gyarados has Tackle as one of its moves. I'm going to just, I'm going to teach him Whirlpool, and then I can always, you know, speak to the move, the leader later on and have him forget Whirlpool. This is one of those moments where I'm very, I'm just very grateful that they removed HMs from the Pokemon games like this, because like, it's one thing if you teach your Pokemon Surf or Strength, like two like pretty decently powerful moves. It's another thing if you... <laughs> it's another thing if you're forced to teach your Pokemon Whirlpool, which is a dog shit move. Yeah, Flash is also not great, but the thing about Flash is, at least in this generation, they beefed up Flash and made it a 100 accuracy move. But they didn't do anything to improve Whirlpool. Whirlpool is still like a 70 accuracy move that does 15 damage. Hmm, I don't know... If I, if I answer the incorrect questions here, do I get, like, a weaker... Dratini? Hmm. The, the, the correct answer here is definitely not cheating. That seems like the most fair answer. Oh wait, hold on. More more questions. I mean, come on now. There's only one answer. Oh wait, so is there no... We're not getting a Tratini? Okay, interesting. So I did not get a Dratini at all from this interaction. Let's... let me... hold on a sec. Let me... I want to just make sure that Aaron knows that I've called him. It seems like Aaron actually wants to battle me again. Don't know if we'll get around to that, but hey. All right. Pokemon Soul Silver Dratini. Uh, getting a Dratini from the Master's Quiz. Uh, go to the Dragon's Den behind Blackthorn City. Go to the cave entrance, go down the ladder, head to the waterfall. Uh, you need to make sure you have space in your Pokemon for Dratini. Um, okay. Okay. 
so... Okay, so it seems like I answered all his questions, but do I need to... Do I need to speak to him again? Why... Why was I not given a Dratini? I answered all his questions. Do I need to come back here later on? Hmm, I'm a little bit... Uh, th this should be super easy, right? <laughs> hold on a sec, hold on a sec, hold on. Uh... GameSpot, a guy posted on the GameFAQs facts forums, when I can get Dratini from the Elder. Okay. Okay, interesting. So apparently, I have to catch Lugia first. Oh. Or do I? It says here, I, apparently I need to go and get a TM from Claire as well. Maybe I should go back to Claire and get the TM. Might as well. We don't, we don't, need, we don't need to rush things. Okay, so we don't have to return to the gym. Perfect. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try and see if we can get ourselves at Dratini, and if we can't do so right away, we'll just return to New Bark Town and call it a day. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! I didn't even have to re-answer uh, the quiz. Um, yes, I most definitely want to give Dratini a nickname. What do I want to call this Dratini? Hmm. Once again, I'm naming all of the Pokemon in this run off of serial names. And so you have a suggestion in the chat of what serial I should name good old Dratini over here. I am all ears. Are there any, like, dragon-themed cereals that I should know about? Ooh, there was, um... There was a, um... Apparently a Quaker Oats cereal called Quake? I feel like that would be... That would be better for, like, a brown type. Tuple says Raisin Bran... Well, number one, I already named another Pokémon on my team Raisin Bran. But two, are you really... Do you really think that I should name, with all due respect, do you really think that I should name a Dratini who can evolve into an awesome Dragonite Raisin Bran? We need to give this guy a far more respectful name. Let's see here. Count Chocula, that was, Count Chocula was um, Crobat's name. It was uh, the name of the Crobat that died last stream. The shiny Nidoran is still around. The, the, the um, non-shiny Nido Queen uh, died. Mm. Let's see here. Three Wishes. There's a cereal called Three Wishes. I've never heard of it before. There's Start from Kellogg's, but that sounds a little bit too generic. Uh, Special K we already called um, <laughs> Typhlosion Mat. Um, well, hold on a second. I know I mentioned it earlier. Quake. Oh, no, wait, it's called Quisp. What 
the hell is this? Interesting. So I guess it was called Quake and then it changed its name to Quisp? Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Uh... Hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to see if there are any other names that are jumping out to me. Problem is, is that you also have a lot of cereals that are named after, like, other pre-existing, like, candy bars or chocolates. And, like, those sound... A lot of them have decent-ish names, but it's like, I don't really want to name it after that. I kind of want pure cereals that aren't named after anything else. Wait a minute, hold on a second. There's a cereal called Kaboom? Oh shit, hold on. Let's read about this. Kaboom, breakfast cereal. Kaboom was the name of a vitamin-fortified, circus-themed breakfast cereal produced by General Mills, which contained oat cereal bits shaped like smiling clown faces and marshmallow bears, lions, elephants, and stars. Its mascot was a smiling circus clown. It originated in 1969. Yo, I think we have our name. Uh, K-A-B-O-O-M. Kaboom. Go look it up. This seems cool. I would have loved to have eaten a box of Kaboom cereal. It seems here, I'm reading from the Wikipedia page, known primarily as a breakfast cereal in the 1970s and 80s, Kaboom remained available for sale until 2010 when it was discontinued by General Mills. So I could have definitely gotten in on the going while the going was hot, but I guess I just was not aware of it. Now, here's the thing about Dratini. That quiz that I took earlier, uh, apparently it determines the kind of moves that my Dratini will have. Apparently, if I answer the quiz not as correctly as I could, I would get a Dratini with Leer. But if I answer the quiz uh, a little bit more correctly than I out to, if I answer it to uh, the best of his satisfaction, I get a Dratini that has Extreme Speed, which is a move that normally uh, Dratini's evolutionary line cannot learn and is obviously a very useful and powerful move for him to have. If he doesn't have extreme speed, that's fine. I have a lot of um, TMs and HMs that I can teach him, but if he does have extreme speed, that is going to be very, very wonderbar. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And for the record, I didn't even know that those were the right answers. I just answered what seemed best and I was promptly rewarded for that. Uh, shed skin may heal its own status problems, and it has uh, lonely nature, which means increased attack and decreased defense. I don't love, you know, decreased defense, but increased attack is good for a Pokemon that is known for being very powerful. Uh, yeah. I think we can definitely work with this, but it is level 15, so we are going to need to be as careful as we possibly can. All right, well. I gotta say, I'm surprised by how well everything worked out in that in this cave. I thought, as usual, things were gonna go to shit. A Pokemon on our team was gonna die. We weren't gonna get another Dratini. We were gonna get ourselves another Zubat, but everything kind of worked out. Oh, hold on. Well, it seems like I'm gonna have to swing by the lab in New Bark Town and see what's up with Professor Elm. Um, hmm, I'm realizing right now I need a Pokemon with Fly on hand. I think I'm gonna replace uh, Weepin' Bell with a Fly Pokemon. What do I want for my birthday? Honestly, this is one of those years where I don't really have a whole lot on on hand that I like really really want because I feel like I kind of got anything that I any outstanding things that I needed uh, during Christmas um, so recently on uh, lego.com they released this new like it's like a new Bionicle set that's made entirely out of Lego pieces it's like an, a, an anniversary celebration set um, of like Lego Tahu and Lego Takua um, to get that set you had to pay like over a hundred dollars in other Lego products on their website. 
Uh, but I already, I went ahead and I got that for myself. I didn't ask anyone to get that for me because, I don't know, you know, it's a little bit weird and it's, some people would say that it's a little bit much that they're forcing you to pay that much money to get this, you know, tiny little Bionicle set, but I did it. Uh, there's an ad right now. Whoops. Are you, um, you, you let me know when the ad is over and I'll, um, all right, it's back. So just in case you missed it, um, yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot that I really, like, want, uh, for my birthday right now, because I kind of got everything that was on my mind, uh, as, you know, potential birthday presents, uh, during Christmas. Uh, there was this, like, one, like, Lego Bionicle set that came out recently on lego.com where you have to pay, like, over a hundred dollars um, to get it. it it only comes as like an add-on bonus to like another big purchase that you make but i already went and paid for that myself because i figured it would be a little bit weird if i asked somebody else to get that for me especially considering that it's like such a absorbently expensive uh gift um so yeah not really a whole lot of stuff right now that i'm like oh man i'm itching to get this Eventually, eventually when, uh, what's his face, Dratini evolves into a Dragon Knight, uh, we'll be able to teach him fly and he'll be able to fly us every which way we so choose. Hey, thank you. Nice of you to just give it to me. Uh, the E-City Dance Center. All right, let's go ahead and let's check them out. Uh, you know, we certainly need to train up our team quite a bit before we head on over to the Elite Four, so... Might as well take every opportunity that we can to do so. Interesting. Okay, so seems like what's going on here is you're going to have to defeat all five Kimono Girls in a row. I'm guessing this is the game being like, hey, this is us priming you for your eventual battle against the Elite Four. It's kind of like that that one house that has like those five um, trainers. Um, no, is it five? It's those four trainers that you can fight uh, along the route to the Lava Ridge Gym. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put Apple Jacks at the front. I don't know how strong these trainers are. But I think that our team is in good enough shape that I think that if we, you know, really hone our skills and play strategically, we can get through this. Hey, Tuples, thank you for the $10 donation. Much, much appreciated. You didn't need to do that for me, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, now I feel like I need to perform uh, to um, make uh, to reward you for such a generous donation. So let's really 
creak my neck and make sure that I, we can do this. Thank you. Thank you once again, Tuples. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, here's the thing. I, I see now what's going on here. We're going to be fighting all the evolutions, and it seems like they're going to be at around level 38 or so. Um, Umbreon, I don't have necessarily a great counter to him on my team. Uh, I don't even have, like, a fighting-type move on... No, actually, that's not true. Uh, what's his face? Um... Uh, Polyreth has Focus Blast, um, but I think it's actually better if I have Applejack's take on Umbreon because I can Leech Seed Umbreon to death and potentially come out of this battle uh, still at full health. So I think this is actually a a, a pretty fortuitous call having uh, Applejack's be at the front. Hmm. So that means, that must mean that the other four Kimono girls must all have another one of the Eeveevolutions, right? This is the Umbreon one, which means that we probably have a Vaporeon girl, a Flareon girl, a Jolteon girl, and an Espeon girl as well. Flareon I'm not particularly concerned about. I think it's a bit of an underrated Eeveevolution, but I doubt it can pull off anything particularly wicked that might stop us in our tracks. I'll probably want to use, um... I suspect I'll want to use uh, Typhlosion for that one. <laughs> Typhlosion can probably do, like, a good number on it. Uh, let's... This is not go working out well. Let's see if we can Mega Drain it. There we go. Um, Jolteon... I mean, it's decently powerful, but I feel like if we if we just hit very hard and fast with Typhlosion, we'll probably be okay. Ah, uh, great. Okay, that's... I mean, I'm happy that that didn't, you know, kill us, but... Yeah, it's... We, we should have... We definitely should have, um... Paralyzed it a little bit sooner. Um... Vaporeon, I'm a little bit concerned about because I feel like it might have some Ice-type moves that might make Applejack's not a great matchup against it. Um, I'm trying to think. I guess we can probably... I guess the safest bet for Vaporeon is probably to have Polyrath fight it. Um, but I don't love it. And then I think Espeon is probably the one... Pokemon that she has, I think, is probably the one I'm most concerned about, because Espeon, capable of launching very powerful Psychic-type moves very fast. I think that's probably going to be another one for Typhlosion to potentially take care of. Um... I feel like do I want to do I want to risk it and potentially take another last resort? No, I've, if I have the potions to heal myself, I'm not going to bother with doing something like that. Now, are we going to be forced to immediately fight? Yeah, okay. So it's like the Elite Four. Okay, here we go. It's Espeon. Hmm. Now, here's what I'm wondering. Here's what I'm wondering. I want to have... Um, Applejack's right up front use Stun Spore or Leech Seed, but I don't know if Espeon has an ability. Does Espeon have Magic Bounce in this generation? Hold on a second, let's, let's check this out. 
<sighs> Let's check this out. All right. I'm on Cerebi.net. Uh, interesting. Okay, so it seems like in Gen 4, the only ability that it had was Synchronize, which means that when it becomes poisoned, paralyzed, or burned, so does the opponent. So what that means is uh, I will not use Stun Sport because that will also result in me being paralyzed, but I will use Leech Seed because I don't think that Synchronize will synchronize my Leech Seed. There we go. Oof. Well, I am happy that Leech Seed struck because... Yeah. Um, now here's what I need to... Here's what I need to decide is whether or not I should, should take the opportunity to switch out to another Pokemon. If so, who it should be. Uh, let's see here. So this guy has 68 special defense. Special K is 76, which is not that much better, but the problem is, is it's the only other Pokemon on our team that really it would make sense switching to. I mean, I guess I could, like, wait it out and see if see if Espeon tries to use some other move and gives me another opportunity because I will definitely consider using Stun Spore on it and paralyzing myself if that means that I have the opportunity to like slow it down a little bit and make uh, you know these battles a little bit easier uh, I am gonna I mean, let's use a Hyper Potion let's see if it uses something else So it is not, it's not letting up. Hmm. Hmm. It really sucks right now. It really sucks right now that I don't have another Pokemon on my team that is, you know, a little bit more resistant towards psychic type moves. I think. I guess my best course of option is to just switch into Typhlosion, but uh, the problem is, is that if at any point she manages to score a critical hit, she will kill either Applejacks or Typhlosion instantly. That'll be that for them. And if that happens, it's going to be so bad. And like, here's the thing between the two of them, Applejacks is definitely the one Pokemon that can afford to die because there are enough similarities typing wise between it and Typhlo and um, Dragonite, not so much with Typhlosion. Plus, we need Typhlosion for some of the other Pokemon, so... All right, I'm going to stick with Applejacks for now. Oof. Problem is, is that, like, it just always does enough damage that, like, I can't not heal after it's tried attacking me. I just need to wait again for the possible like stray opportunity that it might it might attempt to use some other move and you know waste its chance at using psychic again but I don't think it's going to do that. It's a good thing I have a lot of potions on hand. And the energy route, too. Uh, Tuple says, what am I going to do with the $10? Um, I don't know yet. Uh, thing is, is that I probably won't actually gain immediate access to that $10 until I'm given my next paycheck from Twitch, which, you know, who knows when that's going to happen. So, I don't know. I'll probably buy a snack with that. I'll probably buy a, a nice, maybe like a Reese's Pieces uh, wafer bar. Or maybe... I don't know. I'll, I'll think of something. I probably, you know, back in the day, I used to invest a lot of money in stream equipment. Right now, I'm pretty good in terms of stream equipment. There's nothing that I really want to, like, run out and purchase right away to kind of help improve my setup. Uh, but you never know. Uh, okay, we are done with those max potions, which means that we are... At hyper potions. Uh, yeah, I, I I really hope that we can 
end this soon. Really hope that Espeon at some point will try and use a move that is not Psychic, but clearly that is not happening. Every single time, I think this is when it's going to finally, finally use, um, score a critical hit. Maybe it'll, oh, you know what? Maybe it'll use Moonlight. Uh, is that possible? Is it possible it might use Moonlight? If it uses Moonlight, I mean, that will be an opportunity for me to go in and hit it with, you know, Stun Score. So that is something to consider. I think we need to survive. If it doesn't use a HP restoring move here, I think we've got two more turns that we gotta suffer through. All right, there we go. Oh, wow, no, only needed that one turn. Okay, well, boom, welcome to level 16. Okay, that was really nerve wracking, but now that we've gotten through Espeon, I think we're good. Flareon, here we go. Well, we definitely can't have Applejacks fighting Flareon, but, but we certainly have a lot of other Pokemon on our team that can. Uh, probably best if I can serve um, Special K's energy, so I'm going to send in Polyrath. I was really hopeful that that would kill him. Uh, I don't love being burned, but yeah, I might actually, I might, that might be something I'm going to have to deal with when we're fighting Vaporeon, actually, which might be next turn if, if she doesn't send out um, Jolteon next. Here we go, Jolteon. All right. Like I said, I'm a little concerned about Jolteon because it's like decently fast and decently powerful, but I'm pretty sure that with Special K, we can take care of him pretty quickly. Uh, we just need to trust here. We need to trust here that it won't immediately score a critical hit, and I think we'll be okay. Oh! Double team, interesting. Well, I mean, I guess if this doesn't kill it, we can always use Swift. Uh, but I am gonna take the opportunity to heal up here. If it uses double team again, nope. It's not. Wow. Wow, okay. I'm glad that I healed there. Um, let's use another Hyper Potion. Man, that is... That did literally exactly half of my hit points. I feel like maybe... Just maybe I should actually heal myself again just to make sure that I am as safe as possible. Wow, that was some incredible damage range on this its part. Okay, here we go. We just need to trust that this one Thunderbolt won't kill us. We should be okay. No, you fucker! Ah, oh, piece of shit. Fuck. Oh, my God, no. Peace. What the fuck? Oh. 
Wow. I do, every now and then when you're doing these Nuzlocke runs, like, you don't know when you might unexpectedly meet your end. I knew that this wasn't going to be necessarily an easy challenge, given that, you know, What's-His-Face showed up beforehand and said, hey, this is pretty challenging, but, like, come the fuck on. Come the fuck on. All right. We have one shot at beating this challenge, and it's that Kaboom potentially could kill Jolteon here with extreme speed, but it's real unlikely, but we're going to try. Dragon Rage probably will immediately kill it, but the problem is, is that it's way faster than us. All right. Ah. Uh, it's not going to survive it. It's, you know, resistant towards dragon moves, but yeah. Ah, oh, you fucker. Again, it's not not going to use Thunderbolt, so we don't have any choice here. trying to think here it, it it's it can kill either of us with just it's thunderbolt but like which one has the greatest likelihood of somehow miraculously being able to survive this fuck Here we go. Maybe there's a limited chance it won't hit us. No, of course it's going to hit us. Come on. Come on. Oh. It did not kill us, though. But, I mean, I don't have many choices at this point. I'm literally running out of potions as we speak, and I'm pretty sure that it is. It still has many a Thunderbolt in its arsenal that it can use on us. More than that, it'll probably score another critical hit like a fucker at some point. Like an absolute piece of shit. Uh, there's no... There are no other items that I have on hand that I can use to... Yeah, of course I have the revives, but those are not allowed per Nesok rules, of course. Um, of course, Pokeballs are not allowed either. Uh, I have the energy root, but like... This ain't gonna do shit. I know that Polyrath, Polyrath does have Quick Claw on hand, but like, it would be the greatest irony if it kicked in now. Only for me to immediately die at whoever we're fighting next. What's that? Oh man, I know, I know it's easy to be like, well, this is your fault, Cozy, for kind of like running in here without really knowing what you were fully kind of getting into, but like, this game doles out experience points so fucking sparsely. Like, 
The Pokemon that you encounter within the Johto region are some of the most underleveled Pokemon that you encounter in any Pokemon game. This game, it just drags you along, drags you along at the absolute barest fucking level that you can possibly be at throughout the entire experience, just so that once any kind of modicum of challenge approaches you, like the Kimono Girls, it can slap you in the fucking face. Fuck this game. I do think that if I'm going to... Whatever my next Nuzlocke run will be, it should probably be... I'll probably want to have it be a game that I've played before, so at least I'll have the advantage of knowing what's coming next. All right. Uh, I was planning on doing a Snacks and Colation segment on this stream, so let's just go ahead and let's do that right now. Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, a.k.a. Cozy Bear, and tonight uh, we are going to be tasting another culinary just piece of sliced heaven perfection from a company that we are already very familiar with. Uh, of course, we're talking about Mattel, uh, the French company that makes all sorts of delicious fruity snacks, uh, and these are uh, apple and apricot compote uh i have no way of describing these like bags sacks i don't really know uh it's called pomme pot uh fruit de notre région pomme de france apricot de rhone alpe so basically apricots from the alps but again it doesn't really the box itself doesn't really explain what they are hmm hmm yeah let's read a little bit about the back of this thing uh, pommes pot, fruits de nos régions, c'est la combinaison savoureuse de pommes d'origine France, issuée de vergères uh, éco-responsables et d'un bon fruit de nos régions. So basically what they're saying is that all the fruits that are in this particular snack come from places around France and they're ecologically sourced and all that. It sounds pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean... Let's go ahead and let's open this thing up. I'm very intrigued by the way that you're supposed to dig into this um, particular bag thing. Yes, I do know how to speak French. I'm from Quebec, where they speak French. Uh, oh, interesting. So you just you kind of twist it a little bit, and there you go. It just kind of comes off. You can already I can already see a little bit of the uh, apricot and apple residue in the little nozzle leading to the interior of this little baggy dude. Um, hmm. Hmm. I mean, I feel like there's not much else to see here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm reading the uh, the back of this thing has the ingredients in. It seems like it is pretty much just entirely apples and um, apricots. It seems like it's 70% apples and like more like 30% apricots, which makes sense. Apricots a little bit more of an expensive premium fruit. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's taste test the compote. Hmm. Whoa, okay. Okay, I might have I might have squeezed a little bit hard on that sack. Cause that was um wow, that was a that was a blast. That was a blast of fruit that I was not anticipating. Hmm. This stuff's good. Like I feel like it's been a while on this stream that we've had something that is as good as this. The apple tastes very solid. The apricot taste, oh man, it is so, so incredibly tangy. These two fruits complement each other so, so much. Man, let me just have another, another sip of this stuff. Mmm. Mmm. Oh man, I just, I love, love feeling its tanginess just sort of swirl around my tongue. Love, love, love it. Love, 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 it. Oh, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest with y'all. I don't normally dole out this number all that often. This thing's a nine out of 10. I was, you know, not expecting something that is as tasty as this for something that doesn't contain any artificial sugar, something that is purely just the fruit and nothing but the fruit.
Oh, man. All right. And that ends tonight's Snacks and Colation segment. Um, okay. I mean, I guess I should probably give a quick little po post-mortem on this Soul Silver, uh, you know, Pokemon run. I'm, I'm just so I'm so tired out and pissed off that I can't even form a proper sentence. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is, is that like I definitely, you know, went into this run a little bit handicapped because and, and by the way, Tuples, you don't need to inform me when when an ad plays. It's fine. I mean, I understand if you want to like really listen to whatever it is that I want to say and, you know, you want to make sure that you don't miss out on that. I totally get that. But you don't need to let me know when an ad plays. It's OK. Um, look, I put I went definitely into this run with a little bit of a handicap, not really knowing the lay of the land when it comes to uh, the Johto region. You know, there were definitely a number of moments uh, throughout this run where I definitely. <sighs> you know what? You know what? Let me let me hold that thought real quick. Let me hold that thought real quick. I've been thinking about what I want to play on stream. Um, now that my Pokemon run is over. And I've been thinking about playing Dead Space Remake. I don't know if you've been hearing about this game, but Dead Space Remake is all the rage these days with the kids on them Twitches. And I'm thinking that it would make for a good stream game. Now, here's the thing, though. I feel like Dead Space Remake might take a little bit of time to download. So I'm wondering if maybe there's something else I can go and check out. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll pop into Dead Space, Space Remake uh, up this upcoming Thursday. That's what I'll play then. I think what I'll say for now is, getting back to my postmortem on this game, I definitely tied my hands a lot, you know, going into this run, not really knowing the lay of the land when it comes to the Johto region. I also, even though... I didn't put any additional crazy restrictions on myself, like not allowing myself to use items in battle. I definitely didn't make this run any easier by, you know, not allowing myself to kind of keep uh, encountering Pokemon in routes until I'd encountered a Pokemon I had not caught before. A lot of people are like, hey, you know, with regards to the Nuzlocke rules, you can, you know, you don't have to necessarily catch the absolute first Pokemon you catch in a route while you're playing through a game. You can keep encountering Pokemon until you, you know, encounter that one Pokemon you haven't yet caught before and you can catch that and that'll be your catch for the route. I probably should have adhered to that. Instead, I made things more hardcore to myself. I made it so that, no, you absolutely can only catch the single one Pokemon that you encounter first on every route in the game. And I think I definitely... I think I definitely kind of like turn the tables a little bit against me in that regard, because I think there are definitely a lot more Pokemon that I could have added to my team if I had not been so stingy with regards to the rules of what I could and could not have captured. Definitely a Pokemon that I could have had on my team that could have been resistant towards uh, Jolteon's Thunderbolt there. But alas, I was like, no, if the first Pokemon I encounter in a route is another Hoppip, it has to be that Hoppip. And I think that I definitely definitely hurt myself there. I feel kind of shitty because like I do want to at some point say that I've beaten the Heart Gold and Soul Silver games, but like I'm not going to just be like, "Ah, it's fine. Let's just play for fun." No, I want to beat these games via a legitimate Nuzlocke run or just like a normal casual run on my own time. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of it for now. Obviously, never say never. I'll probably come back to this game at some point in the future. Um, all right. You know what? Let's do. You know what? Let's do. Let's go ahead and let's switch over to my PlayStation display. And let's go ahead and let's uh, find a new game uh, for us to play right now on my PlayStation 5. Uh, give me just a quick second. Just a quick little second. There we go. Right now, our Elgato is not receiving any signal because, uh, of course, uh, we don't currently have our PlayStation 5 turned on. Uh, give me just a quick little second, and I will be right back with PlayStation 5 controller in hand.
I'm back. There we go. <sighs> All right. Uh, give me just a quick little second. I'm going to just duplicate the PlayStation 5's uh, stream on my leftmost display so I can see and hear what it is I'm getting into, too. So I don't know if you remember, but I actually um, played both Ratchet and Clank uh, and um, Control, the PlayStation 4 version of the game, uh, during my Extra Life live stream back in 2022. Uh, I ended up actually coming back to both games and platinuming them um, uh, earlier on this month, uh, which means that I don't really have much else to do in them anymore. God of War Ragnarok, I platinum that one. I guess I could come back to Elden Ring. Uh, Cult of the Lamb, Sonic Frontiers, platinum both those guys. I mean, there is always Overwatch 2. Hmm. Hmm. Let's delve into my library real quick. Real quick. See what it is that I could jump into. As you can see, I have a lot of real shitty trophy games that I played for the um, uh, uh, extra live stream that I did way back when. Man, I keep trying to get into Hades, but I'm never able to really just kind of get into the rhythm of things. It would be fun to jump back into Apex Legends, but I don't think I have it downloaded at the moment. I think I removed the download because I wasn't really playing it recently. Oh man, Outriders. That was a game that I very briefly played uh, with some friends, but then they moved on to something else, and that was kind of that. Oh man, Hentai vs. Evil. I forgot that I downloaded that game at some point. It has been a... Needless to say. Um, I, have a, I have an interesting uh, collection of games on this year PlayStation. Some of these games, like, I legit don't even remember. Oh, man, I would love to get back to ReZero starting life in another world, the Prophecy of the Throne at some point. That game was pretty good. It just had really weird, like, strategy segments that felt very underbaked. Kind of like that one Digimon game that came out recently. Hmm. Hmm. Looking at Jacked 2... Sorry, not Jack 2. I'm looking at Jack 2. This is a sequel to a video game that I love very much. And it's a game that itself I don't love very much. I think that Jack 2 is a weird, overly dark turn from the much more kind of gleeful original Jack and Daxter. Let me look up something real quick. I want to see if I wanted to go in and platinum Jack 2. What would I have to do? Are there a lot of missable trophies if I want to get the platinum here? Oh, man. Uh, apparently, we only have to do one playthrough. <laughs> but uh, apparently, it takes 18 hours and it has a 5 out of 10 difficulty. There are uh, five missable trophies. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really feel like doing this on stream. I'm just going to be depressed the whole time and really neurotic and nervous that I'm missing a trophy. Man, everybody loves Hollow Knight, and I think I actually do have that downloaded to my hard drive. But hey, everybody, this has basically just become Cozy showing you his PlayStation's, you know, hard drive collection of games. Um, this is a Toadu Majutsu no Vutral On. This is a, uh, a crossover between the uh, A Certain Magical Index and Virtual On series. I know there are a lot of people that enjoyed that. Problem is, is that right now, the one game that I'm most motivated to immediately go and play is actually 
um, Fire Emblem Awakening, which I recently downloaded to my 3DS, but obviously it's not very convenient if I want to like go and do that. I recently uh, completed on my own time uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater uh, on my PlayStation 3. Uh, I do actually have my PlayStation 3 hooked up to um, like my uh, like capture card, so I could actually pipe in footage from that. I wanted to really play something on the PlayStation 3 right now, but I don't really know if that's something I want to do. Uh, let's see here. Did I? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Do I have... Uh, Uncharted, uh, what is it? Lost Legacy. I've never played Lost Legacy. And in light of... Uh, the Uncharted series being in the news again, thanks to them potentially teasing a new... Um, what is it? Like, entry in the series via that one trailer. Huh. So, okay, so this contains... I guess this contains... Yeah, it contains the Lost Legacy and A Thief's End. Uh, how, how, how long of a download is this? We'll check this out, and if it's not, if it's a little bit too much, we can always cancel out of it. Oh wait, so it's letting me, it's letting me download a Thief's End, but it's not letting me download a, just the Lost Legacy. Well, I'm not going to bother with that then. I'm sorry. <sighs> Let's see here. Oh, I saw Lost Planet Extreme Condition. Talk about a, a game that I played uh, pretty extensively back in, like, I want to say 2018. No, it, was, it would have been 2019, I want to say. I played all three Lost Planet games way back when, and none of them particularly, like, no, that's not true. I actually had a lot of fun with 2 and 3, but, like, they weren't, like, games that I absolutely, absolutely loved. There are some games here where I'm like, wow. Killzone Shadowfall, Beyond Two Souls. Like, there are, like, entire eras of PlayStation history in here that rose and fall, fell. Uh, Ryan, remember when that was, like, a really anticipated, like, PlayStation 4 launch game? What a time. Oh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. I like that game. Evolve again, another game from another era. Ah, oh, man. Man, oh man. Man, oh man. Now we're getting into a bunch of games that I distinctly remember playing when I was living in Japan. All the games that you see on screen right now were games that I played on my PlayStation 4 when I was living in Japan. Good time. I actually, I participated in like a trophy war in like the kind of funny like forum community way back when. It was... Wow, talk about a blast from the past. Ether One, that was a game that was like super broken when it first released, but I ended up replaying during that one month that I had the Trophy War. It's still not great, still kind of broken, but you know. Uh, developing games is hard. And of course, PT, which I still have <laughs> downloaded to my PlayStation 4, but obviously, you know, did not make the jump to PlayStation 5. What's funny is that the the illustration for PT apparently it was just like the like some random backyard belonging to like one of the developers, but um, it, it like it looks so ominous the way that they set it up with its little like title card thing. Oh man, I forgot I still have Ray Rayman Legends downloaded. Oh, and Sifu, right? Because I played Sifu in the lead up to uh, the end of the year last year. Wait, 
hold on. Oh, I have the Forspoken download. It's like, when did I download Forspoken and why would I have it downloaded? That makes sense. Oh, Axiom Verge 2. I did not enjoy the original Axiom Verge. I thought it was a very so-so game. Fallout 76 I have not played. Jedi Fallen Order is great. I recommend everyone plays that. This is basically just evolved into me being like, hey, look at this game. That game's a cool game. Oh, interesting. So it's just like all my... It's just a list of all the games that I own that I like obtained via PlayStation Plus. Interesting. Uh, Persona 5 Strikers, I actually do want to check out at some point, but I feel like I need to finish off Persona 5 first, uh, which, you know, who knows when that's going to happen. Days Gone. Another game where I'm like, looks interesting. I don't want to invest like 400 hours into trying that game out. Do I want to give Crash Bandicoot a shot? Hmm. Let me just, I'm going to go scroll through to the end of my PlayStation Plus collection and then I'll make a decision. Transformers Devastation was one of those games that like I downloaded with the intention of playing it at some point, but the, the opportunity to do so never really came up. Switch Galaxy Ultra, that game features some of the most repetitive gameplay across the most amount of levels that you could ever conceive. It got real tedious really fast, and the, the reward at the end of it was not worth it. Broforce, one of those weird indie games that I tried to enjoy, but I couldn't really get into it. Uh... Galax Z, that was a game that came courtesy of a development studio that previously had been responsible for an indie game called um, Skulls of the Shogun that I really enjoyed. By the way, it's actually Shogun. My apologies. But Galaxy was way too hard. I couldn't get into it. Now we're getting into like some of the earliest ones. These are a bunch of games that I played on the Vita, actually. Here we go. Skulls of the Shogun. Shogun. One of my favorite games on the PlayStation 4. Uh, okay. Um, where is where is Crash Bandicoot? Where is the Bandicoot? Where is the good old Bandicoot? Let's find this dude. Where is he? Where is he? Come on, come on. I know you were around here somewhere. By the way, what's the deal with lovers in a dangerous space time and laser disco defenders having literally almost the exact same cover art and like kind of motif? That always confused me a lot. All right. Where's the bandicoot? I know I know I passed by him earlier, but I'm just I've not been scanning these games very well. Ooh, Sonic Forces. I could check that out if I can't find Crash Bandicoot. Here we go. I thought I would come across like a little illustration thing that had Crash himself on it. I had forgotten that it was just the the logo. All right. I feel like because this is like more of like a simplistic like platforming game. Yeah, it's not going to be a super huge download. All right, about five minutes left. All right, well, everybody sit tight until then. Oh, wait a minute. This seems really... Oh, no, okay. For a second, I was like, wait a minute. Is this 10.27 megabytes? That seems awfully small. Is that is that going to be just like when, like, you have a, a game that will, like, pre-download just enough data that you need to, like, get the game going, but it won't actually download all of it until you actually start it proper? 10.27 gigabytes makes a little bit more sense. So the thing about Crash is... By the way, while I speak, I'll go ahead and I'll 
edit the title and category for tonight's stream. Um, the thing about Crash is uh, I've heard very mixed things about um, uh, the original, you know, set of games. Obviously, they were very instrumental in, you know, uh, I'm trying to find, hold on, I'm trying to find the category for this game. Uh, Crash Bandicoot N Sane. Uh, interesting. So it seems like there's not a category on Twitch for just Crash Bandicoot N Sane Trilogy. I guess we, I just have to go with Crash Bandicoot. All right. I'm going to change the title. Pokemon Stream Ended in <laughs> Failure. So we're going full crash bandicoot all caps perfect yeah i've heard very mixed things about the original games on the you know original playstation i know that they're very nostalgic for a lot of people and they were very instrumental in helping you know define uh playstation's brand identity back in the day um but i know there are a lot of people who have said you know they've not aged uh, as well as like you know something like uh, the original, like, Mario 64, for example. Um, and I know that the Crash Bandicoot and Scene trilogy cleaned up a lot of things about the uh, original trilogy of games, but now, I know there are a lot of people that are like, yeah, the games, the, the this trilogy of uh, remakes definitely cleaned up a lot of things in those original games, but those original games were still incredibly challenging, and these th this sort of trilogy retains a lot of that challengingness and is apparently not the most fun thing to play but i've never ever ever before set my hands on a crash bandicoot game that's actually not true i did play a little bit of crash bandicoot during that brief segment in uh uncharted da, da, da. it was uncharted 4 i played a little bit of crash bandicoot during that brief segment in uncharted 4 sorry for spoiling that being a thing in those games um and so yeah i mean we'll we'll certainly see we'll, we'll we'll certainly see how the full the full thing holds up here we go 93% just a few more seconds and we'll be good to go Oh, Jesus. I'm looking right now. I, w I went and looked up uh, how difficulty the original Crash Bandicoot is to platinum. Uh, according to psnprofiles.com, the original Crash Bandicoot to platinum is a 7 out of 10 difficulty game, and it takes 18 hours to play and fully platinum. Jesus. Activision presents a smashing blast. From the past. Developed by vicarious visions. I hope that the volume is good enough for you. Uh, on my end, it seems like it's averaging between 30 and 25. The music is, I mean, it's very nostalgic. I, I feel like, I mean, this is, I'll say this right here. Uh, music very reminiscent of the music from the Jack and Daxter games, uh, which makes sense because, of course, both were developed by Naughty Dog. Uh, did your school teach French from K through 12? I mean, basically, yeah, our, 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 the way that our schooling system is set up is a, a little bit different, but that's pretty much, I had to do a little bit of uh, French during like my first few years of Seja, which is like what you call like an intermediate university that you take when you're in Quebec. All right.
I mean, I guess I guess junior college is probably the yeah, I guess that's probably the best way of comparing it. Yeah, it's like it's like this thing where like you go to it for like two years and then you move on to university proper. This is a charming cutscene. So wait, Crash Bandicoot was like a experiment? Well, okay, so that's Crash's sister, right? Why is she so different from Crash Bandicoot? It isn't really, there are a lot of questions I have about this game that I feel like the game is not really particularly intent on answering. I'm reading, I'm on the side, I'm reading a little bit about uh, what I need to do to eventually get the Platinum. It seems like part of the reason why this is like such a hard Platinum is apparently you have to like beat a lot of these levels flawlessly. Like basically be able to complete them very quickly without making any mistakes. Which I can see how like, even with a relatively small amount of levels, that could be a pain in the ass. Interesting. So you can't. So you, there's no double jump to speak of. Uh, okay. Man, the way the way that all that information just came down when I used the triangle button, that is like. Hold on a second. There has to be a ground pound, right? I'm trying to see, is there, is there not like an, a, a control menu somewhere around here that I could use to figure out what I gotta, oh, whatever, it's fine. I will say this, the movement controls uh, and the movement um, like animations in this game, very smooth. This is a smooth ass looking game. Let's see, so we have two different paths. You know, this level is not that bad. I can see how this level could be like pretty frustrating as like a first go around, you know? Jesus. I'm, I'm assuming that that what I just experienced right here and right now has to be like a relic of like the original version of this game, right? Because I feel like nowadays no self-respecting platformer with like would like beat you over the head with the knowledge that you missed all that content. All right, well, I'm not going to really I'm still feeling out this game, still trying to figure out if I enjoy it. So I'm not going to. I'm not really going to worry about getting everything right here and right now. I'm just going to kind of focus on making my way through the levels and, you know, if I, turns out, you know, it's an all-time beloved title of your boy Cozy, maybe I'll go through it, you know, trying to platinum it.
I will say, I do love how, like, weirdly OP uh, Crash's spin attack is. You'd think that by this point, he would have gotten a little bit hurt by something trying to spin dash into it, but nothing of the sort has happened. Um, again, I know, I know there has to be a, like, ground pound move, but I don't understand what button it possibly could be, because I'm pressing every button on my controller right now to see if I can activate it while midair, but nothing is working. Ah. I do like Crash as a character. I think he's a pretty... He's a pretty solid-ass character. He, it's weird that, like, following up Mario and Sonic, Naughty Dog's solution of how to make another recognizable mascot platformer was just to be like, make him crazy. Like, we already have, you know, like, traditional in the, in the form of Mario. We already have cool in the form of Sonic. The way that you you know, out cool or out traditional, those two characters is by just making a character that's, like, out of his gourd. And I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't know what it is. It just kind of works. Well, that's, I mean, I guess I don't really know what I was expecting there, but like, this entire time, like, Uh, whenever I've approached those things, I haven't done anything, and I've been kind of like, well, am I supposed to, like, intentionally activate them to, like, get all sorts of thingies for that? Oh, man. All right. I think my... Whew. I think my slight, like, a pet lack of patience for this game might be starting to sit in a little bit. Uh, two pulls one. Should I get Taco Bell? Yes, you definitely should get Taco Bell. No question about it. Oh, hey, we got a trophy. Spin Doctor. I'm not particularly... I didn't, like, really go and look up individual trophies. I just sort of read what the general requirements are to get the platinum in this game earlier. It is nice when you get a trophy like that out of the blue, though. Oh, hold on a sec. What is this? Interesting. Were these... Were these side-scrolling levels in the original Crash Bandicoot? Also, by the way, really weird that apparently there's like a MOBA Crash Bandicoot game coming at some point in the future. I don't know why they thought that would be a cool idea. Oh my fuck. Oh my fucking god, really? I think I'm I'm think I'm beginning to understand why these games have a bit of a an infamous reputation amongst some video game fuck. Oh my god. Well, it's a good thing things definitely can't get any more challenging from here. And here we go. Game's gonna let us know how much shit we missed. That's really, like, I'm surprised. If that's from the original version of the game, I'm surprised that they didn't figure out how to, like, get rid of that and replace it with something that 
ends the level on a little bit more of a congratulatory kind of like note because that is really shitty. All right, here we go. This is more of like a traditional ish side scrolling level. This game is really beautiful, though. Like, no doubt about it. That being said, this game, if there was ever a game that needed a double jump, it was this game. They should have... Like, they should have made it so that you had access to, like, a double jump right off the bat in this game, and made it so that, hey, if you want the traditional Crash Bandicoot experience, you can just turn off the double jump. Fuck! Man, the hitboxes in this game are such bullshit. I, I probably, I guess I probably could have used that, fuck. I probably could have used that turtle to gain a little bit more elevation. Also, I'm at zero lives, which means that, um, yeah, I'm probably going to be dying soon. Yeah, I still, by the way, don't know what that does. I guess it protects me from damage? I don't know. Not that hard, but yeah. For the third level in the game, it was still kind of. I don't know. You think that they would have a bit of a better difficulty ramp up? I am shocked that I have not died over the course of the past minute or so. Oh, here we go. Another secret level. Where are we going to go? I don't think there's any chance in hell that I'm going to platinum this game, but I mean, I appreciate getting a few trophies here and there. And here we go, the obligatory, yo, look at all the shit you missed during this level. Don't you feel bad about yourself? Let's see, is there any way to... I just want to see... There's no way for me to kind of look around the island and see... What's ahead, is there? No. Uh, so this is one of those levels where you're running away from shit, right? I want to say that this was the level that was featured in Uncharted 4. Because I remember it being a level where I was running away from the screen. And this level, like, more so than any of the other levels we've played through thus far, is the level that feels the most like, you know, Uncharted or Indiana Jones or, you know, th that kind of whole lineage. And so it would make the most sense that this level would have been in that game. Yeah, th th it was definitely this level. I remember this now. Ugh.
Wow, I'm amazed that I got that on my first try. Hey, look at that. We got a key and a diamond, whatever that means. And so, let's see. Okay, so that, that percentage bar thing was basically referring to our overall progress. Okay. Uh, Tuple, sorry, I've not been paying super close attention to the chat. Uh, Tuple says, what do you usually order from there? Thing is, is, I don't really order very frequently from Taco Bell because, no joke, Taco Bell no longer exists within the province of Quebec. Um, it existed there for a brief moment, and then they decided to hightail it out of our province for reasons that elude me. I'm pretty sure you can still get it if you go to Ontario, uh, which is uh, just west of of the province of Quebec, but yeah, in Quebec itself, you can't get Taco Bell anymore. Oh my god, this... The problem with this level is that, like... I don't really... Again, the, the hitboxes in this game are so whack, I don't know like what counts as me hitting or not hitting those fish. And so I'm just trying to avoid them entirely. Make sure that no inch of the pixels that make up my beloved Crash Bandicoot touch the pixels that make up the fish. This is a pretty, a pretty pretty level though. I guess, you know, earlier I was talking about how this game doesn't have a double jump and it could really use a double jump. I wonder if the idea is that, like, the devs were like, this game doesn't need a double jump because you can just hold the jump button to kind of, like, jump a little bit further, as indicated by Crash Bandicoot doing his little somersault in midair. And it's like, I get that, but, like, I don't know. The, the extra reassurance of a double jump would go such a long way towards making me actually really... I appreciate this game more than just respecting it, you know? Okay, so you just need to wait for the leaf to do its thing. One of these days I'll get one of those transparent boxes. Interesting. So this is, uh, is this my first boss? Hmm. I'm not sure if this boss would really fly if he was made today, but... Uh. Well, I'll just, I'll, I'll forgive... I'll forgive the team for doing their best with a boss that was created in the year... I, I am assuming 1995. Oh, so you can actually jump on him while he's doing that. Okay. Well, this is oddly easy. And is that it? Well, that's it. Okay. Uh... Okay, that was a little bit awkward. 
All right. Uh, I guess I don't... Yeah, I don't get anything for that, huh? Oh, Coco's Time Machine. Oh, wait a minute. So this is... Okay, so this is Crash Bandicoot's sister, and the other woman is her girl... Is his girlfriend? Neat. I am definitely going to play as Coco for a little bit here. Because she is... As much as I respect Crash Bandicoot as a video game hero, I think Coco is way cooler. And I like that she actually holds onto her book the entire time. That's neat. Why is it that I don't get any any of the Wumpa fruit if I break those baskets in the air? Um, why? Come on, really? But man, even though this game is pretty punitive, it is a beautiful game. Okay, I get it now. So we actually, we can't, we can't break it by spinning into it. We actually have to, um, we have to like bounce on it like in Mario. This game has more Mario mechanics in it than you would think. Okay, I get it. And so you bounce on it once and that makes the other ones blow up. Okay, okay, okay. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit more of a handle over this game's mechanics. Oops. That's not great. Uh let me just check something real quick. Okay. Oh, fuck. I was not paying attention. My bad. <sighs> Oh, man. Come on. There's no way I could have known that. Oh! Oh, my f fuck. Again, this is why you needed a double jump. Oh, my God. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I would love to eat a wampa fruit. I think that the wampa fruit would be, like, absolutely delicious. Ah, uh, damn. I, I missed out on the opportunity there to get some more fruits. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, can't access it. Oh, well. At least she has her book to protect herself. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> well, I appreciate getting a trophy from that. That's actually a... That is a genuinely funny trophy. Um, Let's see here. Oh, interesting. So we could only play as... Crash for this level? Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's a... It's one of those levels where you're riding around on an animal. Man, I would much rather... I mean, this level's not bad, but... I would love to be playing a Donkey Kong level. I only beat 
um, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze once. I enjoyed it, uh, but I have some qualms with it, mainly over the fact that that was the last game that Ultra Studios worked on for like over a decade. Um, I would love to at some point go back and try to Jesus fucking Christ. I would love to take another stab at Tropical Freeze again and see if I can really connect with it. There are like a bunch of secret levels in there. Come on. You gotta hate a a platforming game like this that is so turnkey and it's like you can only can only beat the level if you go to this exact position at this exact time. Also, we have no way of like attacking what's in front of us. At least Rambi from uh, Donkey Kong Country could charge at opponents in front of them and knock them over if you, you know, did things correctly. Actually, not even that. If you were just like playing a level where Rambi was like moving at like a normal pace, Rambi would like immediately kill whatever it is that you were facing off against. Oh my god. I have no way of knowing. If I'm playing through this level for the first time, I have no way of knowing exactly where I need to be on screen to avoid... Fuck. To avoid getting killed when I'm about to encounter those dudes. Uh, so I have to actually have to jump into them. I feel like, again, talking about the way that Nintendo does things versus the way that other companies do things. Um, Nintendo would not force you to do that. Nintendo would just allow you to, like, run into it. You don't have to do an extra jump there. By the way, I gotta say, I I complimented the kind of opening music to the game earlier when we first experienced it. So far, most of the music in this game not really not really doing it for me, to be honest. Feels kind of generic, but I get how if you're somebody who really grew up on these games, it's probably very nostalgic. <laughs> Ah, damn it. Well, I, I am happy at least to be back with another one of these, like, normal side-scrolling levels. Honestly, I would take a full game of just these types of levels. Don't, don't give me the other kind. We're good. Is this... This level almost feels like it's a inverse of the other level we played earlier. Actually, you know, hold on. Hold on. Ah, uh, damn it. Ah, uh, okay, I get it. So I have to jump up and do the spin. Okay. Oh, thank God I got the checkpoint right there. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so the little T 
tiki thing... The little tiki thing basically protects you from whatever should attempt to damage you within the next little bit, which is basically everything. What, what killed me there? What killed me there? What the fuck? I hate the fact that you can slightly move back and forth on the, like, y-axis on these levels. They should have just locked you to the x-axis. Oh, fuck you. There we go. All right, we're back. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, God damn it. Oh my, what the fuck? Well, I do appreciate the game gives you, when you're on your extra life, your last life, the game gives you the little do to help make things a little bit easier. I guess I can't um, do the little spin move in midair because I think that's what screws me up. Oh, what the? Oh, I got it. I got it jump on the little fire thing, but I assume that that would hurt me. Also, who is this dude? Why are you not Cortex? Wouldn't you, wouldn't Cortex want to appear to kind of like laugh at me in my face when I die? Who's this like generic Tiki dude? Oh my god. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Thank you. 
Oh no, fuck. This level's still not over. And it's another checkpoint box, which means that there is still more to go. castle up in the distance, that's where we eventually will go at the end of the game to defeat Cortex, I want to say. Oh, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, don't let your eyes deceive you. Your boy just beat Crash Bandicoot. Pay no attention whatsoever to this enchanted tiki head that's saying something. I think he was saying something like game over or something to that extent. I mean, when you beat a video game, your game's over. It's a game over, which means uh, that clearly we have finally, at long last, managed to defeat Crash Bandicoot. Uh, thank you to the Ronarchy for the follow. I truly do appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, because we, as you can clearly see, just beat Crash Bandicoot, uh, we're actually going to be uh, using this opportunity to close out tonight's stream. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. I'm sorry that my Pokemon Soul Silver Nuzlocke run ended in failure. Again, I, I you know probably could have, in retrospect, planned it out a little bit more so that I could have given myself more uh, diverse team options. Good night to you, uh, the Ronarchy. Uh, don't forget that you can catch these streams live on Twitch every Monday and Thursday at 8:30 p.m. EST, and his VODs on YouTube every Wednesday and Saturday at 3:30 p.m. EST on my YouTube channel, Cozy Bear. And of course, you can also find me on Twitter at Alex Kozina, A L E X K O Z I N E. If the, uh, sorry, K O Z I N A, uh, if the tweets and the twits are more your speed. Till next time, I'm Alexander Kozina, aka Cozy Bear, and I hope that you all have a good night.